Chefs traditionally like to cook on gas stoves, better control of heat, they say. But uh, some of them now are switching to electric stoves because they have uh, been sensitized to some of the environmental consequences of uh, burning natural gas. Well, natural gas is mostly methane, CH4, for those of you who are chemically inclined. <clears throat> when methane burns, it produces carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide, of course, is a greenhouse gas, but the amount that gas stoves at home contribute uh, relative to all the other sources of uh, carbon dioxide this is relatively small. But there is also a small amount of carbon monoxide that is produced when uh, a gas stove is on. And carbon monoxide could be an issue because it displaces oxygen from hemoglobin in the blood. It's anyway a good idea to have a carbon monoxide detector at home. But there's another concern here. Whenever uh, there is combustion and there's air around, which of course it always is, the gases in the air, which is uh, about 80% nitrogen and 90% oxygen, combine together to form uh, what we call oxides of nitrogen. And these are nitrogen dioxide, nitric oxide, nitrous oxide. And these are respiratory irritants. And studies have shown, especially in children, that they are linked with uh, decreased lung function and uh, even with uh, asthma. On top of it, oxides of nitrogen are also greenhouse gases, and they can uh, cause uh, global warming, along, of course, with uh, carbon dioxide and, and many other uh, so-called greenhouse gases, of which methane is also one. And whenever there is a gas stove that is on, not all of the methane burns. Some of it escapes into the air, and of course it contributes to the greenhouse effect and, and uh, climate change. And then there's also concern that during the uh, transport of methane along pipelines, there is some leakage of the gas, and that can be substantial. Now, in some areas, it is easy to get natural gas from the ground. All you have to do is sink down a pipe, and uh, hit a pocket of natural gas and up it comes. However, in other areas, you have to carry out what is known as fracking. And uh, in those places, the methane gas is actually in, in tiny pockets embedded in the rock. And the rock has to be cracked in order to get it out or fractured, which is where fracking comes from. In order to do that, you have a fluid that has to be piped down and under high pressure. Now, that fluid is mostly water, but it contains other chemicals as well, like sand that keeps the, the cracks open. Uh, you have uh, uh, other components like guar gum that increases the viscosity, uh, ethylene glycol that prevents scale formation, glutaraldehyde that, that prevents corrosion due to, to microbes. Now, all of these chemicals can seep into the environment, and uh, in a high enough concentration, they, they can have some toxic uh, effect. So that's the issue with relying on natural gas. Overall, though, taking everything into account, an electric stove is still more environmentally friendly than a gas stove, uh, especially in areas where the electricity is generated by hydropower or solar power. Where it's generated by burning coal, that becomes a more difficult issue. At home in the kitchen, in order to reduce uh, the inhalation of nitrous oxides and carbon monoxide, you want to have good ventilation. And uh, 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 ventilation uh, exhaust above the stove uh, is a fume hood is, of course, a great idea, but it should be vented to the outside, not only have some sort of filter uh, through which the air recirculates. Also, remember that when you're cooking, especially when you're frying, you're also releasing all kinds of compounds into the air, a direct result of the combustion process of the oil and fat in the food, and those are not particularly good to inhale. So good ventilation in the kitchen is uh, really something that should be uh, looked at quite seriously. And that for today is our Kappa Joe.